Hey, what's going on everybody? Happy New Year, hope you're doing well. In this video, I wanna share what I think are the best crypto gaming MMORPG projects. And MMORPGs are basically just a bunch of people interacting in an open world type game. Some examples of this would be like World of Warcraft or RuneScape. And this is actually my favorite type of genre. I think it's gonna work really well for Web3, just because you can have a complex economy and possibly even multiple tokens and people trying to arbitrage different little micro economies within the game. So I think it makes a lot of sense. Uh, I want to share some projects that have already came through the space and have failed due to hyperinflationary reasons, you know, poor tech tokenomics, and also some games that have failed to deflation, you know, Amazon's New World, they had all the money, all the talent, but due to deflation, really hindered their growth. And I want to talk about some things I look for in games in this video. So before I do that, though, I want to share some news with you. I did start a free crypto gaming discord. I'll drop the link in the description. And also follow me on Twitter because I share stuff a lot quicker there. A lot of opportunities have came up recently. So hopefully you follow me there at Wabo Crypto. Uh, some news I would want to know about if I didn't already. If any of you are interested in the AAA shooter game Off the Grid by Godzilla Games, there are nodes being sold via OTC through Cryptopia, which is a VC group I really like and really recommend them as well. Um, I'll share a, a picture of the website, what that looks like as well as what the OTC platform looks like as well. Uh, some other news is gonna be, if you're interested in Cedify, specifically their Metaverse project, uh, if you hold the Vanguard collection or the mounts, there's gonna be snapshots where you can earn land parts for Seed World, which it's not an MMO necessarily, but it's a UGC, user-generated content type metaverse where you could create your own MMO within there. So really cool. Before we jump into the video and I show you some stuff, I just want to say I'm not a financial advisor. None of this is financial advice. So let me jump on my computer and show you guys some more stuff. The first thing I want to share with you is just things I look for in a crypto gaming project. I think one of the biggest problems facing the space right now is most projects when they model their games, they're modeling it for investors rather than players. And if you don't have a, people playing the game strictly for fun, I don't think you have a good chance of being successful as a crypto game. And a lot of people also, they just think about short term. They pretty much create a short term Ponzi scheme. They don't think about the long term side effects of this. A good example would be something like Axie Infinity, Crypto Kitties, Thetan Arena, all games we've seen fail due to inflationary problems. And whenever you have, you know, poorly modeled economies, you have stuff like this where I lost my entire life savings investing into Axie Infinity. You can actually read this guy's story on Reddit. Um, also some games do suffer from deflation. So we actually saw new world where people were refusing to buy things in the game and they were just bartering back and forth with resources because to repair your items, you needed gold to pay taxes on your house. You needed gold. And, you know, so, uh, really interesting to look at the economies of some of these games. And some of these games I've actually even admitted, like Axie says by design, the economy will be dependent on new entrants. So uh, Axie was kind of a victim of his own success. It couldn't build out a really complex economy before the game blew up. So that was unfortunate. So anyways, I want to run through some things I look for in MMO. Number one is probably going to be an active founder or a face of the brand. I love this for any project. You think of successful projects, probably the number one retail coin, at least last cycle was Cardano. And why? It was because Charles Hodgkinson could sell his vision so well. Um, other gaming projects specifically, we have Alluvium with the Warwick Brothers, Neo Tokyo, obviously, Elio Trades and Alex Becker, Cedify, Meta Alchemist, yeah, he's pretty active on Twitter, and they just have so many ambassadors, so really like that. And graphic style is another thing I really look for. You know, a lot of people do complain that a lot of these crypto games look really basic, and I agree some of them do look too basic, but also um, a lot of the most successful games have been pretty basic graphic styles, and whenever they create a graphic style that's too complex, a lot of times it's so hard to create enough end game content to keep people coming back. And Amazon New World, that was actually one of the other really big things that held it back. Influencers um, that like the project, this is actually pretty obvious, so I'm not going to go too in depth on that. Uniqueness, um, this is something I really look for in crypto games. So how easy is the game to replicate? This is just business in general. I like, I like businesses that are um, you know, not easy to replicate, high barrier of entry. So the good thing about MMOs is they're really hard to develop. They take tens or hundreds of millions of dollars to finish. So I really like that. Um, can the game survive bought in? This is going to be really important when you think about how they model the economy. Can players just go in and kill monsters and extract the token that's tied to you know, a monetary value? If, if it's easy to bought, the game will pretty much have no success as far as an economy standpoint. Um, PC requirements, this is really uh, interesting one, actually. 
Um, if you look at some of the most popular games right now, you know, Pixels, stuff like that, really basic games that people in these less, you know, developed countries can access. So something like um, Alluvium, you know, it, it does require a high graphics card. And a lot of these games with really advanced graphics, you know, the first thing I do is I go and I turn down the graphics setting so the game runs better. So do we really need a game that looks insane? Probably not. We know it just needs to be fun, good gameplay loop, that kind of thing. Um, ways for the game to continue building. Can't, do they have a system that generates revenue, whether it's a monthly subscription, battle pass, um, is the user generated content, that kind of thing. Um, is it, is the game based around a token or around collectibles? So one thing I really like about Alluvium is I think they are going to do really well with the NFTs having collector value because they almost, you know, got a lot of inspiration from Pokemon. So I really like, um, games that have a collectible, you know, really nice art, that kind of thing. Um, free to play, pay to win. This is huge. I like free to play games, pay to win, you know, spider tanks by Gala games. The reason I quit is I hopped in and, you know, these upgraded tanks, I had no chance against them. It was like the worst experience ever. Even if I upgraded my tank, some of these guys had paid, you know, $5,000 for their tank and they just ran me over. And, you know, they also had the higher earning potential with their tanks and sure I could have rented a tank, but you know, it really loses the, the fun of the game, you know, upgrading your tank and that kind of thing. So pay to win in games specifically with PVP, I think are a no go. And probably the most important thing, which we're going to talk about in the next slide is how they implement sinks and faucets. So I found a good diagram here to conceptualize the idea of sinks and faucets. Basically a faucet is going to be any way that new coins come into the ecosystem, whether that be through completing quests, killing and looting mobs, or getting on the seasonal leaderboards. Basically, once those tokens come in, they go into the player's inventory and he can choose to trade them with other players. Or the problem with a lot of games is there's really no use case for the token other than to sell it or to make money. But if the player is just converting that to a monetary value, naturally, the token grinds towards zero. Everyone loses interest in the game and everything falls apart. Even if there is a governance token, you know, being that the, you know, the in-game token has lost all of its value, people will just kind of flee the game and it makes a lot of sense. So... What uh, a lot of developers need to implement is more syncs or ways to use the, the token in game and make the gameplay loop more enjoyable and the economy more complex and more challenging and more fun. So that's what we're going to be looking at next. Some examples of syncs, really. We already talked about faucets. So syncs are ways that you know, players are using the coins. So, um, and, and some of these are controversial and, and, and pay to win, but I just want to give you some examples. I don't, I'm not saying I agree with all these. So item upgrades to upgrade your gear. Craft or buy cosmetic skins. You know, it's part of the one of the reagents or one of the crafting materials. Um, crafting material substitutes. So say you're making steel armor and you're missing iron ore. Maybe you use some of the in-game currency almost as like magic and it, it generates that for you. So you're basically paying because you, you didn't go out and find that in the game. That would be an example of a sink. To repair items, I like this one because in all MMOs, you know, everyone has to repair their gear. It's there's gonna be a lot of a lot of faucets, but you know this would be a really powerful sink. I think the item repair should be pretty much in every MMO. Um, to merge items, the breeding. This is another interesting one. One MMO I'm involved with. They talk about the concept of horse breeding, and basically, if and horses having a lifespan. So if you're breeding horses, and the ones that are you breed never die, there's just gonna be millions of horses, and then those you know generation zero or genesis horses lose all their value because eventually every player has ten horses, and what's the point, you know? Um, so another example would be battle passes. I really like this one. You'll see a lot of really big games now, you know, out of sort of a new season, they'll give you this battle pass or like a list of things you need to accomplish to complete that season. And you'll get some kind of like, um, you know, limited or, or seasonal, uh, NFT or thing for completing everything on the battle pass. And that really helps with retention and gives the company a sustainable form of revenue. Monthly memberships. This is another one that's interesting that I've seen games use successfully. Uh, an example would be RuneScape. They had their premium membership where if you wanted to use like dragon armor or enter high level zones or exclusive zones, you had to pay like $5 a month, really small fee, but it gave the company a lot of money to build with staking. Um, you could see, you could say that staking is almost like a faucet because especially if it's high APY, because, you know, new coins are constantly coming in, especially some, some games that give like 200% APY. I'm not a, really a fan of those. But one example of a, of a game that's doing a good job about that I like is Domi Online. So you can stake their token. And instead of getting more Domi token, you're getting what's called a C token. 
which is a, a token that's not pegged to any monetary value, but you can use it to buy cosmetic NFTs and exclusive mounts and things like that in the game. So rather than being inflationary, they're actually taking coins out of circulation and also giving a, a good use case for the token. So really like that. So another example of a sync would be like tax for home ownership or amounts. Uh, a new world, for example, if you owned a home, you could get some buffs from your home and maybe some storage space. So, um, and, and if you didn't pay your monthly taxes and then you, lo you lose those buffs and those benefits. Uh, another example would be to enter dungeons. Um, big time has this, you know, if you want to enter certain dungeons, you need to use the big time token like that. Maybe a death tax. If you want to come back without penalty after dying, maybe you have to use some of the token, otherwise you lose experience and time. Um, tax to own or rent amount. This is another interesting one. Uh, guild formation, vaults, increased storage space to start. Uh, maybe you have to use tokens to start premium quests or to use some of the most powerful spells in the certain games. So these are just ideas that I came with up off the top of my head. Uh, let me know in the comments what you think of these or if you can think of any that games could use uh, to implement to make their economies more balanced. Some examples of poorly designed games, you know, CryptoKitties was actually like the OG crypto game. Um, in 2017, you know, I was like, what the heck's going on with the Ethereum gas fees? It's kind of like the first play to earn game. You could have these kitties and breed them. Um, essentially, it was actually what inspired Axie as well. But long and short of it is there's now there's millions of crypto kitties and they have no value because all you could do is breed them and really uh, no sinks in the game. So and Axie was kind of inspired by that. But uh, we talked a little bit about Axie and, and why that failed. And then, um, yeah, so let me jump into some games that are um, coming out soon or already out. And we'll talk about um, their economies and things I like about them as well. So the first game I want to share with you is called Mirandus. And this is actually the flagship game of Gala Games. They have poured millions and millions of dollars into developing this game. It's a first person game, which I like. A lot of games are third person. This one is unique being first person and they feel that it adds to the immersion. And I have to agree. And basically, this is an open world medieval themed game where it's hardcore. They don't give you a map. The penalty for death is experience loss and everything in the world is actually owned by the players. So the towns, the buildings, everything, and even the exemplars or the ca playable characters all owned by the players and have earning potential. And this is actually the most fun I've ever had playing a MMO. And that's a good sign because a lot of times when you hear people talk about games, you I don't want to throw anyone under the bus, but for like big time, I always hear, oh, how I make $50 a day playing big time. They're not talking about how fun it is. They're talking about how much they're earning. This was like an epic battle. Like we had to get hundreds of people on the same page in voice chat to figure out how to kill the, fi the final boss of this particular play test. And uh, you see everyone working together. There's a lot of videos online if you guys want to check out the mother kill um, Mirandus. Uh, they have regular play tests. So they're going to be having another play test at the end of quarter one. And that build for the next play test is actually going to be left up indefinitely. So it's going to be playable forever. And this, uh, the, this really opened my eyes to how much fun it is whenever there's like uh, a monetary value attached to the boss kill. Just listen to the excitement of everyone in this clip whenever uh, we finally do kill mother. So that took days to accomplish of planning and figuring out the world and, and mapping the geography and everything like that. So it was a lot of fun. And for this particular game, it's, you can see the graphic style isn't great. Um, they're still improving on it, on a, uh, obviously. Every playtest they've had has improved greatly. Um, I want to share an interview with on-chain gaming and Bitbender where they talk about the graphic style and why sometimes these low poly or low res graphics are actually beneficial to the game long term as far as um, new, new experiences and finding little Easter egg experiences as Bitbender puts it, which I like. And uh, so let me show you this clip here. Um, and what that does is that speeds up development massively. It reduces, uh, it reduces the number of people needed to create a game by tremendous amounts. I mean, if you look at some of the, the AAA games out there, you might have a boss, okay? And that boss might have 5 million polys, mm -hmm. okay? And if you've, if you've invested 
you know, a team of 20 people and you've paid their salaries for six months to create a boss, yeah. then you, you know, for sure the game better lead to that boss. Yeah. It just better because we mm -hmm. spend all that money. So you got to go see the boss. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but with this, we can set it up so there, there can be, you know, weird little places, little Easter egg type experiences because the, the cost of creating that experience is not a bazillion polys. It's not the 10 man team for four months. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a person going, Hey, we have these assets. Let's put this together. Let's, you know, make this. And we know that the. So I actually really like the graphic style of Mirandas and this game is being led by Michael McCarthy and Jason Hughes. And I really like the minds of these guys, which is why I'm so bullish on Mirandas. Uh, if you listen to some of their interviews, I think you'll also fall in love with Mirandas. Um, I know I did. Some things I don't like about it is I'm not a huge fan of Gala Games, for one. And another thing is to play the game, you're going to have to own or rent an exemplar, which there's 50,000 exemplars. And right now there are about 50 bucks, which isn't bad. But if this game becomes popular, they could become more expensive. They've talked about incorporating free to play exemplars in the future. But an interesting thing about Mirandas is it's all one instance. So everyone's playing in the same same game you know there's not a us east us west like servers for all over the world and that's interesting because most games aren't like that and they say that being that miranda's isn't really a twitch game it's more of a strategy game they can kind of accommodate everyone in one world and being that everyone's in one world is why i think they want to make the exemplar requirement because they can maybe handle you know ten thousand concurrent players but if you have three hundred thousand, it could be harder so in terms of server infrastructure i think that's why they've chosen to go this route um I don't love recommending the game whenever I say, oh, if you want to play this game, buy an example or, or rent. So something I don't love about it, but hopefully in the future, they can get it to be free to play. Um, if you come to OpenSea, you can see there's different exemplars, humans, dwarfs, orcs, elves, halflings. Um, they all have, the different exemplars have different um, like little, little buffs. So for example, the conveyors can carry slightly more weight. The alchemists have a little bonus to potion making. So um, you can hop on OpenSea, and grab an exemplar. There's gonna be a play test at the end of Q1 and there's gonna be Materium earnings. There actually is a coin for Miranda's right now called Materium, um, but the only problem with it is not much of the supply is out. So there's gonna be heavy dilution. So if you do want exposure to Miranda's, I recommend just going to OpenSea, grabbing you know one of these exemplars, seeing if you like the game and you're gonna be earning Materium in the regular play tests. Um, that's what I've done. I've had mine for years. They've already more than paid for themselves just from the Materium that I've earned. So if you're interested in Mirandas, there's um, a lot of good interviews and stuff like that. Um, if you want to join my guild, it's Masters of Materium. I'll put a link in the video description. I'm actually not the guild leader. The guys who lead this guild are wicked smart and all about Mirandas, and they have a lot of good videos. So yeah, that's Mirandas. The next project I want to share with you is called Domi Online. And this is actually being built by a smaller indie game studio. And it's a super low market cap project. I think it's like 14 million. Um, like maybe like 40 million di fully diluted. But what I love about this project is the team behind it. The lead developer actually used to work at Jagex, which is the company that built RuneScape, a game I used to play a ton as a kid, a lot of fun, uh, probably the most successful and famous free MMORPG game of all time, really changed the whole landscape of MMOs in general. And the founder of this project actually has over 4 million subscribers on YouTube. He created the first music NFT. He starred in HBO's Viking series. I mean, the guy does whatever he wants and he's successful at it. So he saw that a lot of Web3 projects were just unoriginal. So he decided just he's going to build his dream game himself. And I actually like the graphic choice here. He was kind of inspired by like the original World of Warcraft graphics. It kind of reminds me of, like World of Warcraft mixed with like RuneScape. If they had a baby, you'd get Domi online. But this game is hardcore. The entire world is PvP. So whenever you're going out there, you know, wood cutting, collecting ores and stuff, you're always going to be facing the danger of other players, which I love. I mean, if you're in your favorite fishing spot, someone could just come up, kill you, and then totally change the game. And this game actually has a, a guild system, which is cool. So instead of finding the Domi token just out in the world, to earn the Domi token, you actually have to get on the leaderboard. So there's going to be like a weekly leaderboard or monthly, and then like a longer leaderboard. So like uh, maybe like six months or so. And the reason they do like the leaderboards shorter term and longer term is to, you know, incentivize newer players as well as players who have been playing a long time to compete. And I love the guild system and the fact that you have to work together. I'm really looking forward to this one. I'm hopping over to the website here. Let me show you some of the, uh, 
utility for the Domi token, because, you know, we talked in the beginning about why utility is so important. So governance is going to be one thing. You see that with a lot of projects, though. What I like about mostly about this is we already talked about kind of like the leaderboard, um, the loyalty program, and I like that they are going to have a premium membership. So basically, you're going to be using Domi token to access exclusive perks, special events, unique in-game items. And I love that. It's going to give the company consistent revenue, which is super important to keep building the game. And we already talked about the staking system for Domi Online. I love that you can take your tokens out of circulation and you're going to be earning the C token, which you can use to buy exclusive mounts, skins, stuff like that. And the staking actually isn't live yet, which is why I think right now is actually a pretty good time to enter into Domi Online. Once people see that there's all these cool exclusive NFTs, houses, mounts that they can only get through staking Domi, I think there could be some serious FOMO. And with the open alpha coming probably next month or very, very soon, there's a lot of catalysts for Domi Online. You know, the prices kind of come back to earth. I think right now is a good time to start looking at Domi Online. And the gameplay and the graphics are pretty good. I can see people really uh, loving this game. And it's not super, super high res that it's going to be you know, they're going to need a giant team to keep continually building the game. And being that it's open world PVP and super unique, like I don't think bots are going to be able to ruin this game and economy. You know, imagine a bot going out and trying to gather resources. They're going to have no chance against real human players. So yeah, Domi Online is one I'm definitely looking forward to. I'll probably start a guild for this. The next game I want to tell you guys about is called Treeverse. And this game is actually being developed by Endless Cloud. And they actually have a couple games in development, one being Treeverse and one being Capsule Heroes, which is a PvP brawler. And I actually like that they're building a PvP brawler alongside Treeverse, because while Treeverse is going to start out PvE in, uh, initially, the fact that they've already built a PvP brawler means that they're probably going to be able to make really smooth PvP mechanics built into the PvP of Treeverse. So a little bit more about Treeverse. It's a classless top-down MMORPG. I've heard people call it the RuneScape of Web3, and I kind of like that. Uh, a very unique art style, which I love for their IP. And, you know, being that it's mobile first, some people say that they don't like mobile MMOs, being that they're like kind of a watered down version because, you know, with a keyboard or a, a traditional MMO, you know, with your keyboard, you have, you know, tons of different keybinds, you know, one to zero on the keyboard. But with a mobile phone, you know, it's hard to get a bunch of different buttons on there to make the game really complex as far as spells and abilities. But if you actually look at the UI for Treeverse, I think they've done a pretty good job optimizing the space they have to work with. Let me show you a little trailer of the actual game. Uh, I think it's really nice. I think you like the art, art style here. So I thought that trailer was pretty hype. And the founder of this project is actually named Lupify, and he's actually very active on Twitter. He is a former artist himself. If you actually go here to their Twitter page, you can actually see kind of the UI here, um, how it's gonna be laid out. You can see this part over here is kind of for your thumb, um, you know, your, your spells and abilities, your basic attacks. I'll play some gameplay footage here. You can see they're in a party. So if you want to, you can uh, check out more gameplay footage. Uh, they have a bunch of videos on YouTube and Twitter. As far as how you can get exposure to this, the Endless Clouds is going to have its own ecosystem token. Treeverse will also have its own token. Um, right now, you can check out the NFTs. There are three different NFT collections for this. The first is going to be the Treeverse plots. If you uh, go to OpenSea, you can see the utility. These are going to be public homes. Uh, you can customize them, rent them out. That's going to be a teleport destination. You get extra storage space. Um, just customization of a place, place a, you know, your own place in the world. Um, there's also going to be the timeless characters. These are going to be avatars, pretty much crossed with all Endless Clouds games. So you're going to be able to use these in Capsule Heroes. 
from what I understand. And they also said they're going to be other cool benefits. And then there is the NF tree collection. There is only actually 420 of these trees. Uh, these are going to bear fruit that, you know, give people buffs and other things inside the game. I do have a tree. I am active in the tree community, a good group of people. So yeah, I definitely like Treeverse and everything that they're doing. Being that it's a mobile MMO play, um, they have a lot of influencers on board. I know uh, Alex Becker and Elio Trades are both invested in this one as well. So, you know, there's going to be a lot of exposure for this game, and I think it looks really good. And it's going to be releasing in 2024, and there's actually a dev build play. If you go to their Twitter, you can sign up to potentially even play the dev build. I'll let you know what I think of it. I think it's going to be pretty exciting. And also Capsule Heroes is having a dev build this month as well. So the next project I want to share with you is called Cornucopius. And this is actually one of the best looking Web3 games I have ever seen. This game is built in Unreal Engine 5. And it's a free to play open world game where there's 12 different theme zones. And basically each theme zone has like a obviously a different theme. So you could think one's Wild West, one's National Park, one's desert themed. And basically these theme zones all interconnect. And you start the game in your own bubble home and to travel to the other bubble zones, you have to use either your own spacecraft or public transportation. And what I do recommend is going over to the Cornucopia's YouTube channel. The founders here actually give regular dev updates on their episodes called Kobe Cafes. And I definitely recommend subscribing to the channel because they pretty much share everything they're doing, the whole process. And these guys are very personal, very smart. And I often wonder how these guys get so much done. And it's because they're all former entrepreneurs and they're really good at delegating and hiring the right people. I mean, these guys have so much going on with their nodes and multiple game modes. So let me share this interview with two of the founders where one of the founders actually in his own words describes what Cornucopius is. New here and you don't know what we're doing. Let me give you some insight into what uh, Cornucopius is uh, real quick here. So Cornucopius is a cutting edge MMORPG set in a world where humanity has ascended from the Earth's surface and created a breathtaking new world in the sky. This fantastical realm is a system of floating islands carved from the land we once called home, now encased in radically advanced dome-shaped structures suspended high above the clouds. Each one is a futuristic marvel with its own unique environment, identity, and thriving communities. It is within these domes the epic journey begins. Here, players take control of their own personal avatar, which gives them the freedom to choose their destiny. Be immersed in vast landscapes, explore vibrant settlements, and engage in a myriad of activities such as crafting, commerce, combat, racing, and more. Welcome to a world where the sky is no longer. So I thought he did a really good job of describing the game. And if you actually go to jpeg.store, the assets for the game are currently on the Cardano blockchain. And you can see there's different land types and different rarities. How this game's gonna work is for the first three, three, the first three theme zones, the land is already for sale. And basically the more rare it is, those players are gonna be able to place their land in the game first. It's like a land rush. So Mythic being the highest rarity, those guys are gonna get a chance to place their land. They're gonna to try to get towards the towns, mines, you know, water, just scarce resources, stuff like that. No one knows exactly how much more valuable those rare lands will be. They also will be getting uh, airdrop, different resources and stuff like that. They've teased. Um, the exact details are unknown at this time, but uh, what I love about Cornucopius is they've done a really good job making it so players can build out their land or domes. So a lot of games like the Sandbox, if you want to build out your land, you know, it's really hard. And a lot of times you even have to hire a professional developer to build out those lands. But with Cornucopius, they actually have a really good software development kits where you can build it out. And some of the stuff you can build is actually pretty remarkable. So like, here's a first person shooter game. Well, this would be third person shooter inside one of the zones. Um, you can build capture the flag games, stuff like that, racing games, all different kinds of stuff. So I love the, the aspect of this game where you can have that user generated content where people can come to your land and uh, enjoy different experiences. Really like that. Uh, in terms of price, this is sitting around $374 million fully diluted. I do think it can do a easily a 10 X from here, putting it at $1. Uh, I think it could even go higher. I wouldn't be surprised to see Kopi tokens at 
five dollars. Um, this game, what they're doing and the talent that they have and what they've put out so far, um, and the influencers who they have on board supporting them, uh, I really think this one is going to do well. I'm always recommending this this one to people when they ask me, hey. You know what? What games are you in right now? This one, um, I have jumped in, played the dev build, really liked it. Played the racing game. Um, looking forward to more from Cornucopius. I mean, the graphics are absolutely remarkable. I mean, just imagine walking like this, fishing in these little side ponds, heading out to a mine. This is one that uh, I think a lot of people will really, really like. And they do have a node sale uh, this week, actually. Right now, the node sale is on Cardano. They're also going to be selling some on Ethereum. So if you're interested in that, you can check out their Discord. Also in the Discord, if you go here, you can go slash claim and claim these corn tokens daily. This is like a Discord token. It's going to get you uh, slash daily access to waitlist opportunities and stuff like that. Um, if you hit it consecutive days in a row, you get like a little bonus. You can see this guy hit 70 days in a row. Well done, well done. So uh, that's Corn Cornucopius. I uh, really like this one. The next game I want to share with you is called Ember Sword. And this is actually going to be a free-to-play browser-based MMO, which pretty much means that anywhere in the world, as long as you have a browser, you're going to be able to hop on and play Ember Sword. You want to have a low barrier to entry. And this is a sandbox MMO, meaning that you're going to be able to build out your land and create unique experiences. This game has actually been in development for years. They started using a third-party game engine, but the company that they were kind of using couldn't really deliver what they wanted to. So they kind of just decided, hey, we're going to build our own game engine. So that's kind of why the progress has been delayed a little bit, but they are getting close to release. And the token for this game is actually gonna be releasing in the first semester of 2024 from what I've heard. I think that pretty much just means like, you know, first three months. You can see the graphics look pretty good, pretty unique. Um, you know, obviously it's gonna have farming, wood cutting, all the stuff you would expect in a quality MMO. It is gonna have PVP as well. You can see some footage here of uh, PvP in the arena. Um, you know, this is just still early build type stuff, but kind of funny watching these guys. I think they get one shot at one point. Oh, easy. Layer 2497. Yeah, if you want to, you can just head over to their YouTube. Oh, oh there it is. <laughs> you can head over to their YouTube channel and you can see a bunch of uh, different videos of Ember Sword and dungeons and. They have had a community play test. So I think there are some coming up. You can see um, and, uh, come back. Please a bunch of gameplay footage. Uh, here's a dungeon, which I thought was pretty cool. You can see them fighting a boss and stuff here. I think at one point this game will be playable on mobile. I think starting out it's going to be PC based. So yeah, Ember Sword looks pretty good. Uh, as far as how to gain exposure, you can see there are Ember Sword badges on Immutable X. The higher rarity badges are going to get you more token allocation whenever the token generation event does happen. Platinum being the rarest, you can see the floor is 11 ETH. And then gold, 0.87, silver, and then so on and so forth. The one thing I didn't love about Ember Sword is if you look at their white paper, there isn't much utility for the token included right now. Um, right now, the only utility is trading in the marketplace. I actually asked them about that, and they said they're going to be updating the white paper to include more token utility. So right now, these badges are more of a speculative play, you know, being that we don't know all of the utility. But hopefully, they're smart and incorporate some good utilities for the token. There's also the Ember Sword land. You can see on Token Trove kind of like the layout of the map. Um, it reminds me kind of like of Sandbox. How the land's going to work is you can actually earn money just by owning the land. I have a good example on the website here. Say a $100 item is sold, $93 would go to the seller, meaning 93%. 7% is going to be an exchange fee. 3.5% of that is going to go to Brightstar, which is the company building Ember Sword. And then 3.5% is going to go to the landowners. So the landowners in that local area are going to be earning 2.5% of that. And then just the whole map, if you own land, 1% of that is going to be distributed through all the landowners. So kind of interesting how the land works. So yeah, I mean, this game's gonna be releasing hopefully in 2024, they're not gonna rush it. So definitely looking forward to Ember Sword. I recommend just following them on YouTube and Twitter to monitor development and more information about the token. Um, there are different types of land plots. If you go to Immutable, you can actually type in and you can see, go to type 
there's the settlement plots, regular plots, city and town. Obviously, the city and town are going to be more expensive, but there are obviously uh, more earning potential. So you can check them out. Um, so yeah, that's Ember Sword. Next up, we have Big Time. And this is actually being developed by a AAA studio. These guys have raised millions and millions of dollars to put this game together. Um, I do feel like the game looks pretty good. Um, as you could just saw, actually, it's, sometimes in the open world, it's a little laggy. And the open world feels kind of empty right now. Um, inside the actual dungeons, I don't really lag at all, so that's good. Um, as far as the movement mechanics, you can see there's kind of like skill-based dodging here. Um, I like the running. Uh, the spells, you actually have to aim them, which is cool. A lot of MMOs are just kind of like auto hit, um, tab targeting, you know, that kind of thing. So as far as big time and the token utility, you can see here, how do I get big time? So big time randomly drops in game, um, but you have to have an hourglass equipped and these hourglasses have time. And basically if your hourglass runs out of time, you have to go back to a time warden to recharge the hourglass. And if you actually look at this kind of graphic here, you can kind of see kind of like the flow. So big time tokens are required by armories and forges to craft cosmetic items. You know, nothing in big time is pay to win. Um, I do feel like they have done a really good job incorporating a lot of use cases for their tokens. Um, really a innovative design, I would say. They have, you can tell these guys aren't, haven't copycatted anyone or anything like that. If you actually want to play the game, you can go to bigtime.gg and just if you go to, let me just go to the homepage here. So just hit uh, get a pass. You're gonna need a, to redeem a pass or own land, I think, to access right now. So basically when you go here and you hit get a pass, you're gonna see one of their partner Twitch streamers. And if you just watch the stream, you know, these guys will drop codes so you can get in and play big time. Um, it is gonna be a free to play game. There are a bunch of NFTs as far as spaces that you can buy and expand, you know, your personal space, you know, to, uh, you know, craft items and uh, recharge hourglasses and that kind of thing. Um, if you, there's a bunch of good tutorials on YouTube. If you want to get really in depth with big time, you can see the different classes here, the ones that are playable now and also will be playable later. So for example, the time warrior, time warrior, you can see um, the base abilities. So you can kind of uh, check out the different classes and find the one that you think would suit your uh, gameplay the best. As far as price, this thing has absolutely mooned since launch. It does have a really high market cap right now, and there are rewards going out, and people are earning a lot of money playing big time right now. To me, it feels like the market cap's too high right now for me to get in. I feel like I kind of miss big time, but definitely interested in playing it just for fun. And, you know, if you, if you do get on the leaderboards, people are earning a lot of money. So it'd be rather than buying the token right now, actually try playing the game. Well, imagine that, people actually playing the game to earn. Uh, so... Uh, big time looks pretty good to me so i'm looking forward to following the progress next up we have decimated and this is actually a cyberpunk post-apocalyptic survival game built in unreal engine 5 and this is actually on the solana blockchain which has been getting a lot of attention lately and i do think it's one advantage this game has over some of its competitors the premise of this game is basically earth has been hit by you know an apocalyptic event uh, made it pretty much uninhabitable. So the people who are left behind are kind of like the criminals and poor people and the unworthy of, of leaving. And basically a totalitarian police force has pretty much taken power. So you're playing, you know, establishing the gangs, fighting for territory, scavenging for resources, also fighting mobs, and there's PvP mixed with PvE. So I do think the premise for this game is pretty cool. And as far as the graphic style, I've heard people compare it to like Call of Duty mixed with Grand Theft Auto, which I think is pretty appropriate. Uh, if you want to, you can check out the full trailer. That's about a year old. Some of their more recent footage is even better. Uh, it is a fully docs team and they are very well funded. Their funding rounds were oversubscribed. So if you actually want to check out more of their footage, I recommend just following their YouTube channel. These guys do post pretty regularly and they are active on Twitter. I think he grabs a jetpack here. So yeah, I think the game's looking pretty good. Uh, as far as price, um, right now it's sitting at five and a half cents. Uh, the market cap is 22 million, fully diluted uh, 55 million. If you actually look at CryptoRank.io, uh, you can actually see what people got this for in the seed round. It was about one penny. But the IEO in the IDO was around five cents. So right around where it's sitting now. I do think Decimated has a lot of room to grow. 
you know, it's up, you know, a lot from the bear market lows, but you know, most projects are up five, 10 X now from the bear market lows. So where it's estimated sitting right now is still pretty low market cap. I do think that this can reclaim its all time highs and even surpass them. So I would say 10 to 20 X on estimated, possibly more if the game does get adoption. Uh, you know, it is looking clean. It does have a lot of competitors, but being that it's on Solana, I think it's uh, uniquely positioned and uh, you know, the team seems pretty good. And they're well funded and they've been building all bear markets so um, i like what i've been seeing out of decimated next up we do have legends of Illumia, and you can see some gameplay footage here this game has been getting a lot of attention recently and mostly because the token has been mooning you know sometimes the best marketing in crypto is just number go up uh, the team has been doing a good job also letting influencers come in and play this game which is why you've probably seen this all over twitter if you're on twitter as far as the token uh, let me show you let's go to the website here there is a two token economy. Elu is going to be the governance token. And this token is actually going to be, well, this game is actually backed by Animoca, Crypto.com. You can see some of the other partners here. There is going to be PVE and PVP, basically the whole lore of the game. The city is built around the infinite tower where you can go enter dungeons and stuff like that. It's going to be interesting to see if these guys can build out enough lore to make it really compete with, you know, some of those more established IPs. And will people come and play this game just for the free to play aspect? I do like that they're involved in the community right now on the Discord. There's gonna, they just announced a vote to you know decide on the next playable class. So if you do want to go in and test this game, you can pick up a Genesis character on Magic Eden right now. There is also an items collection and pets collection. I'm not sure if the pets collection is out yet, but it will be out soon. As far as the price, people have been asking me, you know, what do you think about Elu? Um, you know, I can't give financial advice, but if I didn't already have any. Um, I would probably start DCAing and I'll share with you why. So if you go to CryptoRank.io, you can see that the seed price was around one cent. The strategic round was around three cents. Um, heading over to CoinGecko, you can see that the current price is around two and a half cents. So we're actually below the strategic price, you know, that people got this in the strategic round. And compared to the IDO and IEO round, we are pretty far below that, you know, you know double in price just to get back to the IDO price. Um, so from that aspect, I think it's a pretty good opportunity. I do think this one will blow past its all-time highs. Um, according to CoinGecko, is $0.12. Cents. So yeah, there's a lot of upside for the ELU token, I believe. Uh, the game looks pretty clean. Um, but basically, what I'm looking for, though, is just to monitor and see if these guys can build out enough end-game content and you know, um, actually hopping in and playing. This is one I actually haven't been able to jump in and play yet. So looking forward to that. But from what I've seen from other influencers, um, you know, the game is pretty fun and uh, appealing. So... I'm looking forward to seeing uh, how these guys evolve over time. They do have a pretty clean uh, white paper you can check out as well. Next up, we do have Star Atlas, and this is actually a AAA space exploration game on Solana. This is kind of like one of the best games by far on Solana. Pretty much everyone knows it. Um, this game has been around and building for a long time. And a lot of people actually criticize this game, saying that it's too ambitious, you know, and they're never going to release anything. But I have to give these guys credit, even with the FTX situation and everything that went, happened with Solana, these guys have continued to build. I do like their CEO, Michael Wagner. He's very active in the Discord. And as I said before, I love active founders selling the vision. And he has definitely built a community of believers. And if you look at these graphics, they actually look quite good. So along with the space exploration, there is going to be, you know, this third person shooter games. Um, I'm sure it's all going to incorporate together at some point, but you know, it is a very ambitious project. Uh, we'll see when the actual full release of the game uh, happens. If you, there's actually a cool thing called Sage Labs, and this is kind of like a spreadsheet game where you can kind of stress test the economy of Star Atlas. And I actually read that almost 15% of all transactions on Solana are from Sage Labs because every single transaction in this game and in Star Atlas will be on chain. So everything is being recorded and it's kind of uh, interesting that looks like it was a good choice that they chose Solana because uh, it's been working well. And this has actually generated them a lot of revenue. So the company has more and more money to build with. So I like what's happening with Star Atlas at this point. Looking at the fully diluted valuation, I actually think Star Atlas has a lot of room to grow being the scope of the project. If they can pull this off, I mean, this thing could absolutely moon. Um, they do have the Polis token, which is kind of the governance token. If you actually look at the tokenomics here, you can see the circulating supply relative to the total supply here. Um, it is, you know, better fundamentally than the actual uh, in-game token Atlas. You can see that um, relative to the max supply, um, you know, less of the circulating supply is out for Atlas. 
uh, which makes sense because it's going to be you know the earning token in the actual game so i do hold some polis uh, i don't hold any atlas i don't own any ships although i am interested in picking some up uh, i've been quite impressed with what they've been releasing lately and i do like the founder he's in neo tokyo so um so atlas is a really cool project and you know while space exploration games aren't necessarily my thing uh definitely gonna give this one a chance because you know there's an og project in the space and if they do well it's good for everyone so i'm definitely rooting for any of these games so next up we do have pixels and this game has absolutely exploded in recent months the land plots have like 10x the player base has exploded and this is a game you can actually jump in right now and start earning which is why I think a lot of people are attracted to this game. And a lot of the player base is actually in Asian countries. This game is on the Ronin blockchain. Uh, let me see, last time I tried to hop in here, the servers were down for maintenance. So we'll see if I can jump in and show you guys. Oh, still in progress. But uh, you can go over to the website here. You can kind of see the graphic style. Uh, I played this game for a few hours. I decided you know, not to continue playing just because the graphic style wasn't for me, but I could certainly see why people are attracted to this game. Basically, in this game, you can go around to different farm plots and you can gather different resources and earn money by selling those resources. Um, the in-game token that you can earn is the berry token. There is also a pixels token coming soon. I believe Pic pixels will be the governance token. And a lot of people are kind of playing right now because they uh, play to airdrop or they think that by playing the game, they're going to be able to get some airdrop of that pixel token that's coming soon. They've also well hinted at that landowners are going to get airdrop the pixel token, but also probably some of the score for your airdrop is depending on how much you've played and your reputation. So the pixels is certainly interesting as far as web three games right now. This game has a massive player base, which is great to see. Um, they also do a really good job working with other collections and NFT games. So you can uh, get your NFT avatars in the game and play as them. Definitely adds to the social aspect. Uh, they do a really good job when they have the community AMAs, everyone gets together. And if you go to the AMA, you can get like an energy buff, which energy is important in the game. To go out and farm, you have to have energy. So uh, I do like what Pixels is doing. Uh, it's not really for me. If you are interested in picking up a land plot for this game, there are land plots with three different biomes. Uh, there is also the silo and the mill on certain plots. These do give benefits as far as also uh, tree density. So if you really want to get into pixels and you do like this graphic style, you just want to hop into a game that you can play right now. Um, there are some good YouTubers that talk about this. Uh, KG is one of them. I definitely recommend some other channels as well. So pixels is definitely interesting. I'm definitely monitoring to see how sustainable the economy is. Right now, the berry token has done pretty well, actually. It'd be interesting to see how that... Uh, evolved over time as you know the player base kind of levels out or declines over time so we'll have to see um right now i think this game's hot because you know there aren't a lot of other games to play and you can earn right now so but yeah definitely looking forward to monitoring pixels all right that does it for this video thanks for watching if you found any value in this video if you could like and subscribe that would be great also follow me on x at wabo crypto and let me know if there are any great mmo rpg games that i missed in the comments below uh, also, let me know your favorites. Until next time, I'm out.